Hey, it's Sean and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. We're outside drinking beers as we do in these COVID days. And what we have today is uh, stouts because nothing says summer, the end of summer, than a whole bunch of stouts. Yes. Now, I don't know exactly what I have in front of me, but I have three beers and Neely has two. So that's something. That's, he's a guest. That's, that's, that's a guest. I'm a guest. That's nice. But I believe that what we have here is at least two different beers. Yes, sir. One that was fermented with Kvake, a Kvake strain, mm -hmm. and then another with the more traditional uh, yeast uh, strain, maybe an English yeast? Of course. Okay, so that's what I know so far. I'm gonna have Mike talk about it because what he has given me, the challenge here, is to uh, do two things. One, he's given me three beers and it's kind of a triangle test, I'm guessing, yes? Yeah, so, loosely. Okay, loose, a loose triangle test, kind of a wavy triangle. He wants me to, you know, sample these three beers, pick the odd one out, the one that's the, the most different. Yep. And then also tell him which one do which I one prefer. You prefer. Which one do I like? And then we'll discuss the after I've given the recipe. While you taste, I'll give the recipe. Yeah. So I have we'll... color coded. They're yes. yellow, blue, and green for all the colorblind people out there. Nice. Um, I'm going to start drinking and he's going to start talking. So let me tell you about this recipe. Uh, this recipe is I've been developing what I want to make of, as a house stout. So I took the opportunity with this to play around with some yeast and some hot temperatures at the same time. Hmm. So let me give you the breakdown of the recipe itself. Uh, the recipe is 71% pale malt, Great Western pale malt. So just a standard two row with like a uh, 1.82 lover bond. Um, then it's 11% light Munich. Uh, that's a seven lover bond Munich and it's seven percent midnight wheat seven percent flaked barley two percent just a scant amount of English chocolate malt at 450 love and two percent of a very light crystal 35 love and those last two additions were just because I I had so such a small amount of them I wanted to throw those in there in there just to use them up uh, this baby was mashed at 154 um, this is a six and a half gallon batch in the kettle just so you know um, if you've got questions what I mean by that, you can put it in the comments. Um, the starting gravity was 1053. And what's interesting about this baby hmm. is um, hmm. both of these beers were fermented at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> one of them received Y yeast 1098 British Ale yeast, and the other one received Oma Gang's uh, Voss Kvig strain. So 85 degrees, uh, they both, the starting gravity of the, they were both the same starting gravity, even though I brewed them on two different days. Uh, fermented at 85, like I said. And so your challenge is, if you haven't picked it out al already, um, what you get and can you pick out the odd beer? And don't worry about which one is which yeast yet. Okay, I'm still tasting. Yep. Um, because I, uh, you know, maybe I don't know which one you poured first. Want me to talk about the hops? You can think yeah, about Yeah, talk a about bit more. the hops a little bit and then I'll. So the hops thinking. will truly confuse you anyway, which Great. is going to throw you off the path. But um, during the, pan the height of the pandemic, I was ordering stuff online and it was hard to actually get um, my traditional East Kent Goldings for making uh, the stout series and, uh, or whatever else I was going to brew at the time. So I was looking for other UK hops, other UK hops I hadn't tried before. So this has been bittered with about 32 IBUs of Admiral, uh, okay? And then um, that went in at 60 minutes. And then with 10 minutes to go, I added two ounces or 56 grams uh, or about seven IBUs of UK Archer hops. Um, the hop character is is buried in there because it is a yeah. stout, yep. but the more that I've been drinking them, <laughs> I, I can pick it out and I actually sort of enjoy it. Um, so I'm going to have to play with those hops a little bit more in the future. Hopefully expect some smash brewing with those in the future too. But okay. I think it's just a little bit twist and something different than EKG all the time. So, <laughs> yes. And you know, you're not going to find a lot of fuggle in my beer. That's so, true. So there we go. Well, we celebrate the fuggle. Yeah. So which one do you think is the odd beer out? Okay. Well. You're wrong. No, sorry. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I don't even get started. All right, so, um, so what I was going to say before you went to the hops, which helped me because I needed more time. Hmm. Yep. Um, I got a lot of ro like ro real roasty notes off the nose on this one, and I was trying to find that. And this is kind of this one has it, but it's just it's a little muted. And then this one, 
There's more co like coffee. Now, in terms mm. of like mouthfeel, this is the odd man out. The green one is different. These are a little thinner and it might be my brain just picking yeah. up like more of the acrid yeah. roastiness. And it's, it seems, you know, you know, this one seems a more soft gluey. Yep. There's like a chewy nature to this one. These don't have that. I agree. Okay. So is that, <laughs> is that right? Is this the odd man out? No. You have found the odd beer. Okay. <laughs> and so which one do you prefer? I, well, I like this one because it's, it's mostly the mouthfeel or is it an interplay in the mouthfeel and the malt or what do you think? So, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question because this one has a little more coffee notes. I know you're not a big coffee drinker, yeah. but I am yeah. and I like this and it has, you know, because of the hot weather, I've been drinking a lot of cold brew and um, yeah. I like the, the kind of the milder yeah. coffee taste that this beer also has. Mm -hmm. And then because of the chewiness, yep. it's just... There's it, a little more chewiness. Yeah, there. it's just, it, I like that. It, maybe because that's what I yeah, yeah, typically yeah. want in yeah. a stout, yep. you know? Because I think some of the oatmeal stouts that you've had, you know, throughout our whole yep. Brew Dudes career, yep. like that's what this reminds me of. And yep. these, are, these are good stouts. They're just a little more, you know, kind of that acrid, sure. roasty okay. taste. So, on the the beers that you have on your right, the blue green, yep. or the blue yellow, sorry, I sort of get a little bit more of um, it's a little more accurate. But the more that you drink it, um, I sort of get more milk chocolate. Where I definitely get more of a coffee roast out of the the um, hmm. the other one, the gr your green. Okay. Um, I sort of like them both. They're not wildly different, though. Would you say that they're wildly different? No, not wildly I mean, you, different. You've got to pick it out. You you're able to pick it out, so it's not impossible to pick them out no um that's for sure so uh oh so your the, the kvake is what gave you a better stout the um <laughs> the kvake is the green one <laughs> oh, look at you yeah. now granted something to keep in mind is that this is uh british ale yeast 1098 yep. fermented at 85 degrees true 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 so i don't know if by some weird biochemistry at that temperature there's um, the ability to grind through some of the malt what's interesting is that this one the British one finished about two gravity points lower than the Kvek did. Huh. so definitely ground through so I'm wondering if um, all things being equal granted it's not all the same mash in the same day but there's the same recipe and, pretty close. and, my, and yeah. I hit the same gravity for both so I feel pretty consistent yeah. there the water chemistry the same all the way through it's just like five grams of gypsum in both batches so mm -hmm. just to, just to balance out our chloride yep yep um, and I didn't need any acid because of all the dark malt right so anyway um, but what I didn't hear you say <laughs> in this is some overwhelming screamingly scary amount of esters which if I told someone, if we started this video a different way and said, here's a British stout I made yeah. and I fermented it at 85 <laughs> degrees, you'd be going, oh, that's going to be an ester mess. Yeah. Right? And it's not. It's not. It's not. It's just not. Um, which I think is very interesting. Yeah. It, to me, that was real the hallmark of the experiment. Right. This could just as easily be. A, com a, a comparison of US05 yep. in 1098, oh, yeah. it yeah. could be SO4 yep. in 1098, it could be any two yeasts. Yes. There's nothing like blowing my mindly amazing about what happened at 85 degrees between these two beers. Yes. Which is stunning. It's, it is stunning. Um, now, let me see how I feel, uh, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there's well, like to be fair, to be fair, well, to, to give you a little background on that. Yeah. Um, the British one has been done for, has been complete and carbonated for a couple of weeks. Okay. And I've been drinking this one because I really, really actually enjoy it. Yep. Before I was tasting this one, but I do really, really enjoy it. And um, I haven't had any ill effects. Okay. So, uh, fine. so we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, I don't know. I'll, <laughs> we'll drink six in a row and see if the fusils get to us. But, but the thing is, from a flavor profile standpoint i'm not getting a hot ferment nope. i'm not getting no uh, a weird like yeast off. character yeah. i'm not getting you yeah, know agreed. now that also could be and i some i hope someone calls it would, would have called this out in the comments if i didn't say it myself right now but we're also talking about a very pretty rich stout yeah beer style right yeah, yeah. but that just goes to show you everything else you hear about out there when someone takes 
beer, a single beer style yeah. and doesn't experiment, that doesn't define the results specific for the variable, it's specific for the variable under those conditions. Meaning, in a stout, this experiment isn't what, like, it's neither one of these beers is off-putting. You would drink either one of these if I, I gave it to yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah. And go, wow, that's really good. Yeah. If I'd never brewed this, I'd be like, hey, here's this house stout I'm developing. What do you think? You're like, that's pretty easy it's drinking. Pretty that's good. nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think we always have to keep in mind, everybody out there who's doing experiments, that there's a lot more variables before we can really get to understanding whether something is yeah. significantly impactful in a way that you know matters. Yeah. So, uh, to me, this just warrants that there's the good thing is there's more experiments to do, and I definitely want to play with this idea a little bit more. Yes. Um, and do a little more fermentation experiments with Kvaik and other strains and go for it. I'll also say too that the I didn't have a way to really um, track it at the time, but the speed at which these guys fermented was about the same. Right. Right. You take any Saccharomyces and put them in at 85 degrees, they're going to rock. They're going yeah. to rock and roll. When when white labs, Y yeast, when they propagate their big vats of yeast, they're not propagating them at 65 degrees and doing a ferment. They're, the ideal temperature for yeast is like 80 something degrees, right? They Fair want yeah. to grow, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's that's the way it is. Interesting. But. So, but the so the next phase, I guess, is would you raise the temperature? Because yeah, again, this is like. The Kvaik strain, it can handle like, you know, over 95 degrees. Okay, so like I'm at 85. Yeah, close. Are we talk, 95 but, is like really pushing it for yeah, that, I know. For that I, yeast. I understood, you know? understood. I don't taste enough of a difference for me to go, well, if I push it to 95, would it be 10 different? degrees is a lot in the yeast, for yeast, don't you think? Well, seeing how you normally ferment this at 70 degrees, 15 <laughs> degrees is a lot for a yeast. <laughs> okay, point right? take, point, yeah. point take, right? point take. So, <laughs> I, think, I think that it's definitely something to be explored. Hmm. I'm not saying no, I'm just saying it's definitely something to be explored. Yeah, I just wonder if you get closer to that upper range of like where like, you know, yeasts are happy, yeah. I wonder if things start breaking down for the uh, Yeah, English well, one. I mean, everyone would tell you that this the the, the fermentation range for this ale yeast, yeah. the top end is 72 degrees. Yes, right. right? Yeah, yeah. But oh, don't go over that because yeah. then like, oh, you're going to screw up your beer. But yeah. like, no, I guess not. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it's just gotten a little thinner. But, yeah, but that's But I can't, I can't necessarily say that that is because of the temperature. We just don't know that variable nope, yet. No, true that, true that. But at the same time, and like, it's not off-putting. And I think that's the, the big takeaway for me is that if you just gave me this one, I'd be like, cool, man, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, this yep. is good. I mean, I mean, there's subtle differences. I just prefer that kind of profile, you know, the, yeah, yeah. profile yeah. because of it. And I can't believe that Kvaik is going to be your yeast strain for your house. I guess stout. so. I guess so. <laughs> All right, so as we explore this uh, crazy uh, Kvaik uh, uh, yeast strain and compare it to like the ones that we typically use, like the traditional ones, uh, we'll continue experiment and, and share our results. Again, this is like a stout style and just a few variables that we that might test it against. I don't think we can say uniformly that uh, that Kvaik is going to work for every style, number one, and two, that you're going to have the same kind of results for every style like oh we'll just use you know you know another english strain for another different kind of uh, beer type and raise the temperature and it's going to be great like we don't know that for a fact yep but maybe we'll test it out and we'll see what we come up with but this is this is great this is fascinating i hope you find this interesting as well um, let us know your experience with just high temperatures like was there times you were brewing something for a colder season in the summertime or just you hit a it was like a heat wave unexpectedly and you're like you know what the temperature didn't ruin my beer and it turned out just fine let us know in the comments below if you like this video give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week for john and mike brew brew on cheers